before we get started, our uh, standard reminders, please silence all cell phones. There'll be no flash photography, no video allowed during the press conference. If you want to download the press conference video, you can do so afterwards at the NCAA Media Hub. We'll take questions from the media room first, followed by those in the Zoom room. We ask that you please state your name and affiliation before asking your question, and we ask that all questions be pertinent to the game upcoming. Joining us for practice day press conferences from the University of Texas, head coach Vic Schaefer. Coach, uh, we'll begin with your opening statement and then we'll take questions. You know, good morning. I think it's still morning. Uh, it is. Everybody, um, appreciate you being here. Um, excited to be here, glad I'm here and, and not the alternative. Um, proud of my team. Um, they um, obviously played very well last night and um, did a great job uh, guarding a really good basketball team, um, team that had won 32 games. So uh, live to see another day. Obviously, we've got to get ready for a, a really well-coached uh, NC State team. I've uh, known Wes a long time. Um, sat there last night and watched his team battle and um, thought they made some great adjustments, especially at halftime. And uh, I've always admired his teams from afar. Uh, seems like I've watched his teams more of late. And um, he just does a heck of a job with them. And um, obviously, we're going to have to play really well. Um, he's got some really special, special kids that can do a lot of things um, on their end. So um, it's a quick turnaround with a 12 o'clock game tomorrow. And you know, we were the, I'm still trying to figure it out, we're the one seed. We played the late game last night, and we got the early practice today. Make it make sense. But it is what it is. Again, this is why we have the edge at Texas. It just seems like every time we turn around, it's something. And so we'll, uh, we just had our practice. Uh, we've had uh, film this morning at breakfast. We'll, um, we'll uh, have a little more film tonight, and then tomorrow will be an be a early morning and, and ready to play at 12 noon. So. Obviously, um, he had some kids really play well last night. Um, James, I think, had 18 just in the third quarter alone. Um, really, really had a big game for him. And again, I, th I just think his inside people are so, so, so good, so well coached, and, and uh, play it. You know, play a really physical game down there. So you've got to be able to match that and and work to defend that a little bit. So, and at the same time, you better be able to go against it on offense. So, well, um, our kids are, they're in uh, scout mode right now. They're in preparation mode. They did a great job in our practice, and uh, we'll be ready to play tomorrow. Go ahead and take questions from the floor, and uh, my apologies for all the, court, all the carts that are rolling by. I think we're ready now. Start here in front. Um, Danny Davis, the Austin American Station. Vic, is there an update on Taylor? Uh, I haven't been back there since the uh, practice today. She did practice today, so that's probably the update I got. I haven't visited with anybody uh, as a result of that practice. Ernie Myers, Wolfpack Sports Mark, um, Sports Radio, excuse me. Coach, um, is there any team in your conference that reminds you of NC State <laughs> and the way that they play? Not really. Um, you know, they're, they remind me of some of those teams I used to have to play in my old league. But um, in this league, um, you know, I, I think you can – I think you can separate it a little bit in that they have big physical inside game, which we have to deal with a lot in the in the Big 12. So they, maybe I need to recircle the wagons there and say yes and no. Yes in that we've had to guard some really good inside players, and he certainly has that. They're so physical. Um, but from a attack you, you know, out on the perimeter like they can and score at all three levels, um, you know, we see that a little bit, but I don't know that we see – three kids that can do it, at, you know, in, 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 all at the same time on the floor like, like Wes has. So I think that's a little bit of a, a, a different challenge for us. So 
Um, you know, every night in our league is such a, a, a battle, and usually there's one or two out there, but don't know that there's anybody in our league that's got three that can really challenge you. Come over here. Jesse Dockerty with the Washington Post. Uh, Vic, you mentioned the other day to us that it's hard to play point guard for you. What specifically makes it, you know, that, that a difficult job? Well, um, I think it's hard to play point guard in general for a coach that demands you to be good. Um, I think for me, again, it's, it's not only running my team, being accountable for yourself, but you have to understand to be accountable for your teammates. You know, I can remember toward the end of Rory's freshman year, um, going through the growing pains with her and by March, I'd blow the whistle and before I could say anything, she'd say, I know, I know it's my fault. And I would be talking about maybe her teammates not being in the right place or doing the right thing, and, and, but she was being accountable. And, and that's the thing, playing point guard, you have to be accountable for your teammates. You, you can't go run something and everybody's not in the right place, you know? And so part of being a point, good point guard is being accountable. And then in Booker's case, it's really, you know, not only has she had to do all that and learn it on the fly, but I still need her to score. And so that's, that's the big challenge I think for her is she turns down shots. You know, I don't want her turning down. And um, sometimes I have to, you know, last night I thought she turned down some shots. And so I have to, I have to tell her, hey, don't turn that down. And so, uh, but I, I think, and then the other piece for me, obviously, I've had some really good defensive point guards. You know, and so playing on that end of the floor is equally a value for our program and our team as anything you do on off, on the offensive end. And when you've got point guards in the history like, uh, you know, Jazzy, uh, Morgan William, uh, Rory Harmon, um, you know, Joanne Allen Taylor played it a little bit for me at Texas. Uh, it, those kids all played both ends of the floor really, really well. Played really hard. Tim? Uh, Vic, Tim Booth from the AP. Um, you made mention last night of when you came to Texas, sort of embracing and, and taking on the standard that Jody set from, from her time there. I'm wondering if you can expand on that as to what, in your mind, is that standard that yeah, Jody 30, sent and what she, meant, what she means to you. Yeah, 34 and 0 to me is the standard, you know, um, and that's really hard chasing that, but that's what I'm chasing. I'm chasing and we're chasing the national championship. That's our goal. It, it's always been my goal. It's, it's, the, it's the standard in every sport at Texas. And so um, it's a miserable way to live, I can tell you. Um, because, you know, as you know, there's, there's only one team left, you know, when the year's done. And, you know, there's lots of places. Coach Sark and I talk about it all the time, you know. There's lots of places you're just trying to make a bowl game. You know, you've had a great year if you make a bowl game. Hey, you make the NCAA tournament. Hey, you've had a great year. Well, that ain't the standard at Texas, not for him and not for me. And, um, and so, you know, when you chase that, if that's really the standard, there's a lot of heartache, you know, um, and, and, or there can be. And, and so, but – Coach Conrad, going to, going to that, when we were walking yesterday out of the arena, she made a comment that really resonates with me. And, and, it, and it is the, it's the answer. There's nothing like winning at this level. You think about that. You can go a lot of places, coach a lot, win game, but there's nothing like winning at this level. But it's hard. <laughs> People think it's easy. It happens all the time. And then maybe a coach leaves or something happens, and then all of a sudden they look up and go, you know what? Maybe they weren't so bad. It, it's not easy. Winning is hard. Our thought for the day on my practice plan. Winning requires you to be different, and different scares people. It does. I run into it all the time in recruiting. It's easy to, easy to talk about, I want to do this, I want to do that. It's easy to talk the talk. 
it's hard to walk that walk, man. And so Jody means Coach Conrad. I won't call her Jody. Coach Conrad means the world to me. It's what I envisioned when I took the job. Her coming in the office and us drinking coffee the night, the morning after the game and talking over the game, like, how can you not value that expertise, that wisdom? I may have been coaching for 39 years, y'all, but I don't, I'm smart enough to know I can't do it by myself. That's why I think I have the best staff in the country. And I don't think I know it all. So, yes. We'll go to the back and then Alexa. Uh, Roger Wallace, NBC in Austin. Vic, how important is it in a game like this to be able to play on offense different ways, kind of adjusting to the game? Shea and Shaley last Sunday didn't shoot it great. You had other options last night. Obviously, they were a big key. And just you never know how the game is going to kind of develop. Well, and I think that's been our team all year. You know, if somebody struggles one night, other people pick it up. And uh, Book struggled a little bit last night, Shea Shaley. Amo did a great job and, and picked up the slack. So, um, you know, it's our team has done it all year. Uh, I, I wish I could say we've been really consistent in one thing or another. Booker's been really consistent. Last night was just a deal. I don't know, you know, but um, she's been really, really good all year, consistently good. Um, in my mind, top five top six, seven players in the country all year, done it all year. So um, I think, again, the, the versatility of your team and how you can score and, and defend really helps. We can defend in some different ways, um, and I think we've had to do it throughout the course of the year. And tomorrow might not, you know, might be an, an, another night where we maybe have to do it a little different. And, uh, and, but this team's done it. They've done it that way. Like so? Alexa. Hi, Alexa Philpu, ESPN. You've had teams uh, at Texas that had made this stage of the Elite Eight. Is there anything about this particular group that gives you that extra bit of hope that this is the team that can get you uh, to the Final Four, anything that really separates them? You know, I, I think, Alexa, with this group, they've, they have developed um, some consistency. They've developed an identity that they play with. Um, I think the heart of this team, not that those other teams didn't have it, but you know, that first team that I had during COVID, I mean, you look back at that group, we were, I think we were 17 and 13. We went in the NCAA tournament. We ended up beating a, two top 10 teams. We had no business beating so UCLA. We, we had them down 21 and a half in the, in the second round and ended up went beating them and then Got to play Maryland, who had the number one offense in the country, averaged almost 100 points a game. You know, uh, Antonelli was saying Vic wasn't going to sleep all week. What's he going to do? He's going to give up 100. And our kid, they, we gave up number 60 and 61 points with like 0.3 seconds on the clock. That team really locked in and guarded. Um, but that team, you know, really, I think, overachieved in so many ways. And uh, then the next team, we were pretty good. We had already. Uh, you know, we, we ended up having a knockdown drag out with, with Stanford out here somewhere. I can't even remember where, but it was out this direction. Um, Might have been Spokane, yeah. And, uh, and, and so, you know, that team was, was pretty good too. Um, but this team, they've just, they've just shown tremendous heart. They're, they're gritty. I mean, it's just, it's really unlike anything I've ever seen, you know, with a team that's, that's, um, you know, there's certain things we do really well and, and they, they understand that and they don't try to step outside of that, of themselves and do things they're not capable of. And I, I give them a lot of credit for that. They're smart. You know, they're really a smart basketball team. And, uh, um, and so, you know, I, I do think we have tough, tough matchups. And uh, I think that always separates you when you've got people on the floor that are difference players. And um, obviously, we've had some kids here lately step up, and, and, and then we've had kids all year that have been difference player. This will need to be our last question. Uh, Jesse Doherty, Washington Post. Vic, what drives you more, loving winning or hating losing? <laughs> Man, I hate to lose. Um, you know, um, to know me personally, um, 
I, I don't go fishing, I go catching. You know, I, I'm gonna know where they're biting, what they're eating and what time of day. That's the, that's the, the scouting report that I'm always gonna get. Um, same with basketball. So I don't wanna get skunked. I'm not out there drinking beer. I'm out there to catch. Um, and, and so uh, I just, you know, I, I think for me, I, 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 do, I do not like to, to lose. And, um, but I will say this, and especially this year, I've enjoyed watching these kids have success. It's, it's really been fun. They have, to see them after games, to see them succeed, to see them beat teams night in, night out, some teams maybe that people think they shouldn't beat, winning on the road, whatever it's been, it's really been fun to watch them win. And uh, I have enjoyed that as much as anything uh, this season. So um, again, uh, we're all chasing that last one. At this point in my career, I've, I've, I've experienced a lot of different things, but that's, I'm chasing the last one. And um, that's what motivates me. And I think that I've got a team that's motivated by that. I think even past our team, I, th I have a program that's motivated by that. You know, I think the thing you have to understand in basketball is top 25, that number 12 through 25 usually is fluid. Even 15 to 25, those teams are fluid. They're in and out, right, all year. When you've established a program that's a top five program, a top 10 program, when those preseason rankings come out, your fans don't venture to 12 and 15 and 25. They're looking at you, hey, where are we in the top 10? Where are we pre -season? They're going right to that top 10. That's when you know you've got it where you want it. It's when you're, you've got a program that lives in that time. Because that's a different neighborhood. In my mind, that's a way different neighborhood than 15 to 30, because those teams are usually pretty fluid. And I think Wes has done that, you know, at NC State. I think he, they've, over the last couple, two, three years, have really established themselves. And, and um, you know, hopefully we have too. And uh, that's our goal year in and year out. So We're out of time. Coach, thank you for your time. Uh, best of luck tomorrow. All right. Appreciate y'all being here. Praise <laughs> the Lord and hook of horns. We'll have Texas student athletes momentarily.
as I ask when we answer questions, just lean into the microphone a little bit so you can see it better. Okay. All right, joining us uh, in our practice day press conference, uh, student athletes from the University of Texas, Shay Holly and Aaliyah Moore. Uh, ask that you say your name and affiliation and who you're directing the question towards uh, before you ask your question. And again, ask that uh, questions be relevant to the upcoming game. We'll at this time open it up for questions. Start down here in front. Um, Danny Davis, Austin, American Statesman. Um, either Ali or Shay, what lessons do you think you learned in 2022 about the Elite that you can think you can apply to tomorrow night? Um, yeah, I think it's really you have to focus on preparation and you know taking every game to heart because if I mean any team that's at this point you have to respect and you know that they put a lot of work into. Um, but I think also just like knowing that we've worked to be in this moment so you can't play all tied up like just have fun. It's supposed to be fun. Uh, this is why we do what we do. So just you know go out and play. Yeah, um, Shay basically hit it. I know for me that was my freshman year and so I remember just taking it possession by possession and really soaking it in because these moments are fleeting. Um, but we worked really hard to get here and it's also supposed to be fun. So just enjoy the ride. Um, but winning's also fun, so playing well. Um, but yeah. Alexa? <laughs> You're confusing me. I know, a little different. Uh, Alexa Field through ESPN. Coach has spoken a lot over the last two days about the standard he holds himself to of trying to get your program to win national championships to get you know these deep march runs. How have you seen that either even just your time first getting to know him or now just being in his program? How does he kind of embody that kind of fight and just that chase and wanting to achieve the very best. Yeah, um, this is year four with him. And I can say that no matter what game, what team he has, he's always gonna coach the, be like, the best he can, the hardest he can, and he's gonna hold you to a standard. And that standard doesn't change whether you're a freshman or a senior because he expects a lot out of us because he knows what we're capable of. So just being prepared for that day in and day out. But he's probably the most consistent person I know. You know what you're gonna get from him every single day and it's gonna be his best. So. Something else that I think people might overlook is that Coach Schaefer is really good at stacking classes, and you bring in such competitive, ranked, great players every year, McDonald's All-Americans, Jordan Brand players. So every time, every year it's like a competition. We're playing against the best of the best in our practices. Um, and so I think he does a great job as a coach at just making everyone better, um, which is obviously his, is his job. So he's really good at it. We're coming back up front. Um, going back to something Aaliyah just said, and Shay, if you want to answer too, that's fine. Um, are y'all having fun? Is this, um, <laughs> has this been fun for you, or is there stress related to all this? Uh, for me, man, I've, I'm having a blast. Playing with these girls, I know they're going to show up every night. I know Coach Schaefer will show up, everyone else. But yeah, I'm having fun. Like, being in this moment, there's what, how many teams left? Uh, eight. eight? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Elite Eight, duh. Um, eight teams left, so to be one of the eight is really exciting. Um, and just looking at the future, taking it game by game. But, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, uh, I'm having a lot of fun, too. I think we can speak for our whole team on that. I think we're, you know, really just enjoying it. And, obviously, like, there's hard moments. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be tough. Um, but we know the work we put in, so I think we're really just enjoying it and having fun right now. Tim. Tim Booth from the AP. Aside from the winning, what has made this season fun for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is we get along. And I know a lot of teams really don't get along, I feel like. Um, but we genuinely, there's really great people on this team, and we genuinely get along on the court and outside of the court. So it's fun playing with girls that you trust, that you compete with every day. You have, it's like a sisterhood. Um, it honestly is. And so every day I come to practice, I'm actually happy to come and see them, see Coach Schaefer, see the other staff. So it makes every day fun. It makes the game more enjoyable. Yeah, I think just outside of basketball, like they're all such good people and they're people I would want to surround myself with whether they were on my team or not. And so I think that's just what makes it so fun. Like winning with those types of people is a blessing for sure. Yep. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. After an off night for Madison last night, what sort of bounce back do you expect from her tomorrow? 
Yeah, it's, it's funny because last night me and Shay talked about it. We were like, we just did that. And to be honest, it was Maddie didn't have a great game. So imagine if Maddie did have a great game and we played that way. And so, I mean, she's a freshman, ups and downs. It happens to the best of us. Um, but one thing about Maddie is, no, she will not have two in a row. And she's, she was so hard on herself after the game and today. And we were like, Maddie, you're fine. Keep shooting the ball. So, yeah, she'll be fine. She's going to calm down and play her game. Yeah, I think sometimes we all forget that she is a freshman because she's actually not very up and down. And so that happens sometimes. And I know she'll learn from it. And she knows that none of us, our trust didn't waver at all in her, our confidence in it. We know she's going to have a great game tomorrow. You know, she just needs to play her basketball and she'll be good. Alexa? Uh, one of the things that Coach said separates this team compared to other ones he's coached is that you guys are really gritty, um, really smart. Where do you feel like... Do you, how do you guys embody that? Where do you feel like that comes from? Who sets that tone? I'm sure you two as leaders are part of that, but how would you kind of describe that? Um, I think it comes with most of the players being older um, and us being in a system for a while, and so we can help the younger ones. But I would say we're a pretty like, veteran team, um, which is always good. You have the experience, the growth of the IQ. Me being able to sit out last year, I really learned a lot from the sideline. Um, so being able to bring that knowledge of the game onto the court this year. Yeah, I think it definitely helps, like, essentially this is a very similar team than what we had last year, you know, like, people are sticking around and they're bought into what we're doing, um, so just the experience, really, uh, yeah, just veterans, I think it helps, and we've, it's been this team for a while, and we were the young team for a little bit, so it's nice now being the older team. <laughs> and what's even crazier is next year we're going to have 90% of the same people, so I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Go back to Kevin over here, and then we'll come up front. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Uh, Aaliyah, you referenced being on the sidelines last year. We saw the quote last week from Paige Beckers about kind of how emotional she was during the tournament about not being able to be out there and with her team and, and getting back to that moment. Was there any time like that that you had a year ago as you were going through your rehab? Man, I had a lot of ups and downs, to be honest. A lot of days where I did cry, um, watching my team out there, and not to sound selfish, but I was like, I really wanted to be out there, especially if we had tight games. I was like, man, I wish I could help my team. And if, you know, you had that sense of helplessness, like, I'm just here. What can I do to help the team? But I had to realize as I was doing my rehab that I can help the teams in different ways than just being on the court, um, being a voice outside of the court, making sure that I'm doing my best in rehab every day so they see me going hard. Maybe that will help somebody else on the court go hard. Um, so, yeah, I totally understand where she's coming from. It's not easy at all. But I think looking back, those moments where I did feel down, um, like I was able to push through and it made me even stronger in a sense. Come up front. Um, the last 12 hours or whatever, what have you all learned about North Carolina State and what do you expect in the Wolfpack tomorrow? Yeah, they're super athletic, really talented, both at the guard spot and inside. Um, so it's going to be a team effort, like always, on defense. But, yeah, that's always our focus is starting things on the defensive end. And then, you know, we'll, we'll get the thing, get the ball rolling on offense. But, yeah, they're super athletic and really talented. So definitely need to have good days of prep. Yeah, Shay basically hit it. We just need to execute and play our game. Come over here. Jesse Doherty with the Washington Post. Uh, Leah, it was pretty cool last night, the way you shouted out your coach. Um, <laughs> what, what made you want to do that? Um, I mean, it was a team thing. We talked about it actually before. <laughs> it just so happens I was the one that uh, was the one that said it. But I think it can go unnoticed. Like, we are the ones out there producing, but we learn all the things that we're doing out there from him. Like, the drills every day that build those habits, they're from Coach Schaefer. Like, we're not the ones that practice like, let's do this drill. No, it's, <laughs> it's all from him. And so he instills that in us, and it's our job to go out there and produce and be effective, and I think that we do that. So it's just a product of our environment in a way. And kudos to him because he's a great coach, and I think he recruits great players. And we're pretty good, I would say, at executing. So <laughs> just thought, you know, like I said, give credit where credit's due. Any other questions for our student athletes? Thank you both for your time, and Thank best you. of luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Tip off for SC Baylor 230.